Hi guys, good day to all, and we are back again to give you the very latest, but this time it's more on the El Nino and La Nina. This is the uh, May update, issued for today, May 20th, 2024, and this is our English version, brought to you by Typhoon2000 and Naga College Foundation. So let's begin now, uh, here is the latest on the El Nino, so uh, for the past few months, uh, after the peak intensity, El Nino has uh, declined and starting to uh, weaken rapidly. And we are now into neutral conditions. And uh, based on the recorded intensity, it's uh, likely to be a strong one. Okay. But it didn't reach the very strong category. And here's the graph that showed to you. This is from the Golden Gate Weather Services based in uh, San Francisco. And uh, this is the website, and uh, it's here. Uh, this was sometime February, and it's now uh, rapidly declining. And uh, if we take a look now at the latest uh, Columbia Climate School International Research Institute for Climate Anxiety, in partnership with the Climate Prediction Center of the United States, NOAA, here's the latest ANSO update issued last May 9, okay? And uh, right now, we are still under El Nino advisory, but uh, coinciding with the La Nina watch. And we are now transitioning from El Nino to Enso Neutral. It is likely in the next month, so probably by June, we are now into neutral condition. And La Nina may develop between June to August with a 49% chance, or July to September with 69% chance. So we are now gearing towards uh, La Nina situation. And uh, as you can uh, see here from the latest SST or sea surface temperature anomalies from uh, May 1, 2024, you can now witness here a cold uh, a drop of temperatures over the, uh, the Central Pacific. This is now the sign of the approaching uh, development of the La Nina okay and you can also clearly see here warm sea surface temperature now moving into the southeast of mindanao a sign that uh, we are now shifting into that uh, uh, lady okay lady climate or little girl climate known as la nina and uh, if we take a look now at the uh, equatorial subsurface temperature anomalies this is uh, the uh, depth if this is the uh, ocean surface okay so here's the depth of the uh, sea surface if this is 50 uh, meters here's the uh, 300 meters deep so right now here's the central pacific and the philippine islands is somewhere outside of this uh, uh, graph okay or uh, this table is right here the philippine islands is here and you can observe here up to 250 meters the uh, sea surface the ocean is beginning beginning to become warmer a sign that we are now shifting into neutral conditions and over the central pacific okay cooler sea surface temperatures began to develop and it's now reaching around 100 to uh, 200 meters beneath the surface okay and if we take a look at the official NOAA CPC answer probabilities issued for this month of May 2024 uh, for May April May to June we expect an increasing trend to neutral condition or normal climate up to 78 percent okay and by uh, May June July it will be uh, at uh, 87 percent so uh, by next month if we take a look at this uh, three uh, three month uh, data so we are uh, just look into the middle of this three month data so june is somewhere here may june july so it's likely that we are into neutral climate but the effects of el nino will continue until july to august it means that we are going to experience still below average rainfall despite the approaching or the day-to-day -day, uh, uh, development of localized thunderstorms which has started last week 
and still occurring right now in various sections of the country. As you can see by June, there will now be, there will be already a 49% of development into La Nina. And by July, August, September, it will be up by 69%. And if we move forward into September, October, November timeframe, this is the last phase of the development of La Nina. It will be more than 80%, likely 80 to to 83 percent so here you go and uh, usually the effects of la nina begins uh, on november until uh, april or may of next year so most likely uh, this is now the trend and it might be a weak la nina or a, a moderate la nina so we shall see in the coming uh, months because the probability of this uh, forecast of more than uh, four months, okay, is still uh, at 50-50 probability. So look at this. Uh, around November, December, January, or, or uh, over the uh, uh, Christmas uh, celebration, or Christmas holidays, the La Nina is now around uh, 86 to 87 percent probability. So let's prepare for the outcome of this uh, sudden shift of uh, climate. So it means that the Philippine Islands and those affected by uh, uh, La Nina will have above average rainfall uh, more than the normal uh, average. Okay. So those uh, that are affected by uh, flooding when there's heavy rainfall in various sections of the country must be uh, prepared with the arrival of this La Nina. As well as a uh, tropical cyclone uh, threat to our country, as you remember, uh, last uh, October to November 2020 is also the same situation wherein we switched from El Nino to La Nina. And then during that time, we saw uh, triple uh, typhoons making landfall over southern Luzon, Bicol region. So uh, uh, that's the uh, scenario when we base it in historical data. It also happened in 1988, also a shift from uh, El Nino to La Nina. We observed the development of Typhoon Unsang, which uh, devastated Bicol and uh, central Luzon. And also, uh, way back in uh, 1998, okay, Super Typhoon Loling or Bob's international name also developed during the switch from El Nino to La Nina, and that was also October 23 to 24 of 1998. And it also brought major flooding across Central Luzon, Bicol region, because it's a slow moving super typhoon only at 7 kph and uh, Bigel region, especially uh, Camarines provinces and Catanduanes, experienced two days of uh, typhoon force winds. Okay, so uh, we suffered during that time. But uh, again, uh, like all uh, of us here, uh, we continue to adapt from these uh, powerful typhoons, especially the develop developments of uh, improved uh, evacuation centers and so forth. Okay. So we will uh, wait and see, and let's take a look at the actual rainfall for April 2024. This was uh, last month, and this is the normal rainfall, okay? And this was the observed. You can see a rapid uh, decrease of rainfall because of the effects of El Nino, and the uh, percent of normal, okay, here uh, last month. Uh, Bicol region is way below normal. Majority of the Philippine Islands as well is uh, way below normal conditions. And if we take a look at the actual rainfall for May to May 19, 2024, this was this is the latest from Pagasa, and you can see here the normal rainfall from 1991 to 2020. This is the average. Uh, it shows here that. Uh, Luzon is around uh, 100 to 300 millimeters, while uh, Big Region, Southern Tagalog provinces, Metro Manila, is within 100 to 200 millimeters. But the actual rainfall is really uh, below normal, 
Okay? Uh, Central Luzon, although some parts have uh, reached already normal status, but not all. Okay? It's still uh, around 50 to 100 millimeters, as well as uh, in various sections of the country, Palawan, uh, Visayas, and Mindanao, Mindoro. While over the Bicol region, it's really below uh, the normal trend of the monthly rainfall for May, for the first uh, 19 days of May, it shows here only 26 to 50 millimeters of rainfall just along Camarines provinces and uh, Catanduanes and Albay will still... Uh, Albay and, and Sorsogon, Masbate are still reeling the effects of this uh, drought condition. So the uh, percent of normal, it looks like the rest of the country except for some portions of Cagayan Valley and uh, Cordillera administered region is way below normal. Okay. And if you take a look at the uh, latest uh, drought uh, condition, okay, dry condition, dry spell condition assessment as of April 30th. It looks like uh, uh, majority of the Philippine Islands is rem uh, remains under drought conditions. This was during uh, as of April 30, while the rest is either uh, under uh, dry condition or dry spell. Okay. Just uh, post this video and look at your areas. And uh, here over the Bicol region, it's uh, currently not affected to uh, dry spell condition right now. Especially here in Naga and uh, Camarines Sur. How about uh, by the end of May, because of the lack of rainfall, it looks like uh, more areas will be under drought conditions. Bicol region, particularly Camarines provinces, will be under uh, a little bit of drought conditions. But uh, during the past few days, we are now experiencing some rainfall. Let's hope and pray that every day we experience this kind of uh, rainfall to uh, battle these uh, drought conditions. Uh, that is forecast by uh, Pagasa during the end of May. This is only an outlook, so we shall know what will be the outcome based on their drought assessment. Okay, and if you take a look at the uh, uh, IRI multimodal probability forecast for precipitation for June, July to August 2024, and uh, majority of the Philippine Islands except for Mindanao will remain under 40 to 45 percent below normal. Okay, that's uh, between June, July to August. So let's just use the middle of this three month period. So for the month of July, we're still under uh, below normal uh, uh, rainfall. But in August, okay, uh, Mindanao and uh, Visayas will now be outside of the below normal status. Mindanao will be increasing to 45% above normal rainfall while the rest of Luzon is still below 40 to 45 percent uh, is still 40 to 45 percent below normal okay and uh, by September we are now away or outside of the drought condition so it's the reverse now slowly we are now into the above normal status uh, most parts of the country will now increase to 40 to 45 percent and look at Palawan and the uh, Sulu archipelago because of the uh, southwest monsoon between August, September, October it will be 70 percent above normal when it comes to the probability of precipitation or rainfall for uh, August, September, October and by September, October, November, because of the uh, approach or the maturity of uh, La Nina, the rest of the country will now increase to 40 to 50 percent above normal. Batanes, southern Taiwan, is 70 percent above normal, as well as uh, uh, although Palawan is only uh, 60 percent, 
Spratly Islands, including including uh, the Kalayan Island Group, is more than uh, 60% or 70% above normal rainfall. Okay. So let's prepare for the onset of La Nina as we switch into neutral condition beginning uh, next month, June. And we expect uh, more rainfall to arrive because of the uh, uh, forecast of an impending La Nina and possible tropical cyclone formation as well as uh, uh, southwest monsoon, the onset of the southwest monsoon. Probably by June, Pagasa will, de will declare the onset of the rainy or wet season across the type 1 climates of the Philippine Islands and also across the various types of climates over the Philippine Islands because we are now leaving the El Nino climate and uh, we expect more tropical cyclone formation will uh, will be in store okay and uh, here's the effects of La Nina just to remember what will be the effects in various sections of the world in the Philippine Islands we expect above average or more rainfall between November to April or maybe until May because of the uh, La Nina situation while uh, central and southern United States will be experiencing dry conditions be between October to April, while other areas will also have uh, wet conditions as well as dry conditions. Just look at the map and you'll see the effects of this uh, La Nina situation for 2024 until 2025. So there you go. That's the latest for the uh, La Nina, uh, El Nino update for this uh, month of May 2024 and we will return this coming June to give you more updates on the climate. From Typhoon 2000, this is Mike Padawa saying uh, stay safe always, be hashtag weatherwiser and thank you so much for watching our channel. God bless to all.